Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around the world, welcome back to another episode of 99 Pod. It's not 1999 anymore. And it's time to talk about the topic, the breaking news that we just got upon coming on the air. And that is Tom Brady and Giselle Bunchkin has finalized their divorce after a 13 year marriage. Mm -mm -mm. You see, Giselle had an ultimatum on Tom Brady. Retire, choose me or choose the game. Tom Brady chose the game. Such a badass dude right there. He did what he had to do, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, this is not another episode of Breaking Bad. Okay, my man's wasn't out here selling crystal mint behind Giselle's back. He wanted to play the game that he so loves, right? Because guess what? He played the game and knew the game before he knew you. But, you know, over the years, this was bound to happen. This was inevitable, right? Giselle Bunchkin going on a lot of politics and tours on the news media outlets. Talking about Tom Brady is having concussions every single game. Tom Brady, I don't want him to get hurt because we have a family to take care of. Tom Brady chose the game. Ladies and gentlemen, wow, it has happened. And you know what? I'm buying stock today on a conspiracy theory that I heard a long time ago. I was a junior in high school, right? And I was minding my business, but surfing on the internet. And I came across this theory. About Giselle Bunchkin being a witch. Okay. And how Tom Brady got all his superpowers from Giselle. Because abracadabra baby. You know what I'm saying? Voila. And you know what? I didn't believe that at that time. right? I, I just didn't believe it. I'm like, you know what? Tom Brady is the goat. All natural, brother. No chemicals. No witchcraft. All natural. And then things started getting tumultuous. Right. Have y'all noticed every time there was a big outcry in the media with something going on, Tom Brady lost the game right after. Oh, y'all wasn't paying attention. Y'all wasn't noticing. Well, guess what? <laughs> I'm going to bring it to your attention. Monday Night Football against the Chiefs. Remember that report that came out before Tom Brady got smoked by the Chiefs on Monday night? OK, look at what's going on right now. The Buccaneers are three and five right now. We saw Giselle burning some sage. Okay, on a video that surfaced right after she, you know, tried to get her divorce papers. So, you know what? As of today, I am buying stock in that theory that Giselle's witchcraft is the main reason for Tom Brady's success, even though Tom Brady's my guy. I got to call it what it is. I got to follow the math. And ladies and gentlemen, the math brings us to 99, 1999, because it's time for another episode. Let's get right to it. Zay, how you feeling, my guy? You know, man, I love the game. I love the hustle. I feel like one of the ball players. You know what I'm saying? So if I leave, fans still gonna love me, man. You know, shout out to Peyton Ford. That was just, that was that movie was just perfect, and that was just perfect for this segment right here. Um, you know, Tom Brady made a decision that ultimately, you know, he you don't know if the fans still gonna love him once the game is done. You know, and he he ain't leaving until his bones are breaking literally every damn play. So this guy, you know, it's 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 tough between what you love and who you love, and and, and clearly the, the the game of football is is on a higher tier than I guess re re uh, kindling his family, and that that's just where it's at right now. What it's looking like from the from the outside perspective, of course. But I'm always in paradise. It's getting who do you nippy. love? <laughs> it's getting a little nippy outside, but I'm always in paradise. You know, we we always set straight. There's a huge weekend. For uh, fans around the world, especially Knicks fans, especially Jets fans out there, uh, there's a big weekend for them. Big weekend for the Giants. It's, it's a it's a crazy weekend for New York in general. So um, I can't wait to talk about it today. It's going to be an explosive episode as usual. And everyone, you know, put your seatbelts on and get ready for the ride. Let's ride, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's going down. I feel the energy. Halloween weekend. Y'all know the vibes. We got a lot of content coming your way. And you know what? I want to stay in Tampa. Bay, okay. Oh my gosh, I keep on rhyming. Woo! Tom Brady. Wow. Let's talk about it. So the Buccaneers, Mike Evans says nobody is pointing fingers at Tom Brady amid struggles. Should Tom Brady get majority blame for the Bucks three and five? Yes, I said it right. Three and five. Yeah, you heard me right. Three and five. Start. Say the mic is yours. Um, I don't think he gets majority blame, in my opinion. I don't think Tom Brady does get majority blame. I think it's easier to blame him due to the 
um, media, uh, out, basically everything that's happening outside of the football field, you know, with him. You know, he has a lot of distractions around him, and that's easily to point the blame on him. But I think it's the play calling, in my opinion. I think the play calling isn't what it needs to be um, for this team. And we have to look at all factors. You know, we have to look at the running game. Look, Leonard Fournette, he's averaging 3.4 yards per carry, which is his career worst. You know, I mean, uh, I think second to career worst. I think his career worst is 3.3. So, you know, he's he's close to his sophomore year in football, um, which is which is not good. You know, so he's not pl- playing good. You know, you got injuries from where Julio Jones was supposed to be. And it's supposed to be that third guy, that third guy on the offense that's going to make the offense open up. He was, he's been hurt. And then you talk about Russell Gage, who was hurt as well. You know, these guys were not healthy. Cole Beasley retiring midseason. He was supposed to be a guy who can easily rack up yards in the slot. And that was that was going to be the slot guy, but he retired. So, um, you know, they have they, they had an abundance of injuries um, little by little throughout the duration of the season, especially, I think, last night. They had a lot of injuries that happened with even both sides of the field, the Ravens and the T- Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So um, I think, you know, it's it's easy to use Tom Brady as a scapegoat when everything in in Tampa Bay is not working out. You know, it's, it's a lot of different things, but I think the play calling is most importantly um, something that we have to look focus on because when we've seen Tom Brady play with, Belichick you've seen even when there's no um, weapons out there they're still moving the ball down to the field you know um when we see him with Bruce Arians when things wasn't working out there defensively they were still moving the ball down the down the field no matter what you know even when guys like Godwin got hurt Evans got hurt for a little bit they was moving the ball down the field so in Todd Bowles situation is he's a guy who's shown us and even on the New York Jets he's a guy who can't move the ball down the field because it's easy to point Tom Brady as the blame with everything going on in the media I think for me, I don't blame Tom Brady. Now, I would say there's a lot of uncharacteristic things that has happened this year with Tom Brady. I mean, Giselle kind of put the pressure on him. So he had to take that leave of absence during training camp, you know, um, traveling to Robert Crabb's wedding, you know, missing a walkthrough. And I always tell people this, you know, based on my observation, not like my life, but other people's lives that I may have worked with in business. When there's an issue at home that's going on, it affects you. You can't comprehend, you know, where you need to put everything aside and focus on what you got to focus on. So to some extent, I can see why people will may, may nitpick at Tom Brady. But the real facts here is that the Buccaneers are straight garbage right now on all assets of the game. Okay, I looked at the Ravens game. The Ravens was able to get to the outside with the running game. Gus Edwards tore them apart. Kenyon Drake, Lamar Jackson. You had a field day. It was like a field trip, right? A a field trip from a camp. Guys was everywhere. Okay, guys was like, oh, my, we are all over the football field. And we did not tackle well at all. I mean, it was just a, it was a terrible game. And granted, playing the Ravens on a short week is not going to be an easy feat. Right, because they use a lot of RPOs. They had they spread you out a lot of ways with the speed. So to have a short week after you just got bombarded by the Panthers with PJ Walker at quarterback. And they just traded CMC. When they traded CMC, I said to myself, the Buccaneers was the biggest winner. Not the 49ers. Not CMC. The Buccaneers. A division that lost. Um, Calvin Ridley, the gambling for a year, uh, a team that lost Julio Jones a couple years ago in Atlanta, a division that lost Matt Ryan, a division that lost CMC. I'm like, wait, okay, I bought my ticket. Then God on gamble because if I was Zach, I would have put money on his Buccaneers. I've been ass out. I would I would have been on the street. Okay, thank God I don't gamble, right? Because I would have lost all my money messing around with these clowns. And you mean to tell me? That this is how y'all look three and five when the whole division opened up like a. Anyway, I'm not even gonna go there. I'm gonna stick to the program. You know what I mean? Put two and two together, you should get four for sure. Anyway, let's focus on this, right? Because on a short week, I give the Buccaneers a little leeway in the sense that it's hard to defend Lamar Jackson's Ravens on a short week. Plus, when you are gaming and watching film. You're watching film on your upcoming opponent. You're not week one. Oh, let's prepare for the Ravens, right? You're preparing for the team that you played week one, week two, week three, and week four. The last time these two teams played was in 2018. 
So you don't know what the Ravens are bringing. You just don't know. Everybody think that you're supposed to know that this is how they operate. Not enough time in a short week, especially when you don't play these guys. We saw when they played the Chiefs in the regular season a couple years ago when Tyreek Hill had about 300 yards. They didn't even know that you don't play man coverage against Mahomes and Tyreek Hill. They had to learn that. We saw what happened in the Super Bowl second go-round. We shut them down. Beat their ass. So um, to that extent, I'll give them leeway. But it is what it is. We suck right now. Leonard Fournette can't run through the daggone party in Red Sea if he wanted to. Wide open. right? He can't run through it. And I'm not even saying that the lines is wide open. Our lines suck. But still, we came out first drive. Leonard Fournette looked all right. Okay, he had a couple explosive runs. And we were able to score a well, methodically touchdown, right? The touchdowns we scored after that was just Oh, throw it to Mike Evans. It's sit in the pocket, throw it to Mike Evans. Those garbage time. Nah, that don't count. The one touchdown that we scored of substance was when Lenny was going off on the first drive. After that, he finished the game, I believe, with about 24 yards on nine carries. What's this? And our offense, the system that we run is a vertical power run offense, right? Vertical power run, which means the running game is the engine for us attacking vertically off of play action. So there's no play action without a running game. You cannot pass to play play action. You have to run in order to play play action. And right now the running game, the running lanes are not open, and then he just lost the juice. I saw with Shaw White come in the game, give a couple explosive runs. We go back to Lenny. What, what, what Coaching, hello, what's going on? What's going on, Todd Bowles? Okay, you need to go bowling. All right, that's what you need to do. You need to coach a bowling team. You cannot coach an NFL team. Get him out of here. Brian Willettwich, hello, wake up, okay? Oh, you wanted to go for the Jaguars job. You would have been worse than Urban Meyer. Pack him up. Pack all these cats up. Pack the Buccaneers up. I'm out. I'm done. Zay, go ahead. Yeah, you know, this this, this coaching is um, very questionable. You know, I think uh, Brand, Bruce Arians is being missed more on that football field more and more as, as the games go on. Um, it's like I said, it's super easy to pinpoint John Brady as the 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 issue. I will say this though, Tom Brady isn't the same guy he was last season for sure. You know, I think teams are stacking the box and forcing them to throw the football at this point because they know Tom Brady isn't the same quarterback he was last year, and it, it kind of is showing. And I understand that he has a lot of distractions and is is kind of giving him taking him away from playing football to his full capacity of what we know Tom Brady to be. But we're seeing a a, a declined not declining but a declined version of Tom Brady from last year you know it's a very similar situation with um with um what what the Jets are doing now because they're a team who now are going with hot hands you know they, they're they're a team that you know of course they don't got no star players they don't got like Leonard Fournette Mike Evans Godwin and those guys but they have they the coaching staff is like all right whoever has the hot hand that's what we're going to we're not, we're not going to stray away from the hot hand we're going to continue to push it forward with whoever is hot or and whoever is cooking up and that's something that I think the Buccaneers were doing at one point in time. They were doing it last year. They were doing it the year before. Go with the hot hand. And I don't know what happened where they're straying away from it now, but it's kind of showing the stubbornness of the coach that they're the go to these other guys. The reality is nobody has a hot hand right now. That's the reality. There's nowhere to go. Mike Evans, we saw that drop last week. Man's had 10 yards of separation. Nobody in the same area code. Man's dropped it. Butterfingers. Right, okay? He dropped another ball, too. Another deep ball in this game where it hit him in the shoulder. Okay? Butterfingers. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? What is going on? Listen, man, I'm so tight when it comes to this team. And one of the things that I brought up on the last show when me and Zach talked about the Buccaneers and all they've done, it's like they free agent class has a lot to do with why they are where they are right now. For example... Julio Jones can't stay on the field, right? He come in one play, he gets a target. He's ready to go to the sideline. Man, you a senior citizen, bro? You 85? Come on, bro. So that's one. Akeem Hicks, a guy that was in our interior, defensive line, he got hurt. He hasn't played since week one, right? Cole Beasley retired. He didn't even play another game. He said, I'm out of here, okay? Kyle Rudolph. He, he's not there, right? He came in the game a little bit. He, he he didn't play in like four straight weeks, not because he was hurt, because he was trash, right? Came and separate from a buzzing beat, okay? So you talk about that. 
You talk about all the guys that we bought in that's not existent. The free agent class. What's going on, right? Um, Russell Gage. I'm not engaged. He's not either. Hamstring. Like, what's going on? So there's a lot of things with this free agent class. Antonio Brown. I mean, leaving mid-game. It's so much disrespect. And y'all was so quick to run Bruce Aries out of town, right? Talking about he old and this and that. And my man's, listen, man. I want Bruce Aries back. I never thought I'd say this, but y'all ran this boy out of time. Out of time. Right? Out of time, out of time, out of time. Okay? Y'all ran this dude out of here. And you know what's funny? Because there was a report that he would cross um, Byron Lettrich and Tom Brady's plays with Red Sharp. He crossed him out. There's a reason why. It's garbage what they was trying to run. Okay? That's why he was crossing out the plays. But yet, y'all wanted to exclude the middleman. Okay, get him out of here. Let's run him out of town. Because you wanted to convince people that this was a succession plan. Okay, I'm passing a torch to a black man. When has that ever happened in society? A Caucasian man said, I'm going to risk it all just to help one black man. Come on. Oh, so you should run for president, Bruce Arians, if that's the reason why you did it. No, they ran you out of town. Speak the truth. Look like the hero. They ran him out of town, and that's just what it is. I'm out. Let Ladies me ask you gentlemen. one last question. Last question, real quick. And before we get out, um, it's a quick one, but do you feel like they will replace Todd Bowles at the end of the season if they do not make the playoffs? So yeah, if they oh, don't make the playoffs. Man, they need to replace this cat now. Okay, how you one of them cheerleaders, bro? I don't, I listen, how you one of them cheerleaders? Get this guy out of here. Him, Byron Leverage, they gotta be a complete overhaul. But the one thing I'll leave us with, and I actually want to lob you up a question before we get up out of here on this topic. With the news of everything going on with Giselle and Tom Brady, do you think that opens the door for Tom Brady to play an extra five years of football in the National Football League? Or do you think, A, he's going to try to salvage that relationship after this season is over? Or B, he's going to try to retire because he doesn't like his current situation with the Buccaneers and potentially try to do what he tried to do last year, trying to go to Miami? I think it's going to be a little bit of both for me. I think he's going to, A, like, try to salvage that relationship, but then also retire because he don't like what's going on currently. It's, uh, I think, you know, he's, he, when he's, when he comes down from that high of playing football and he's sitting at home in the offseason by himself, he's going to realize, I need All to be my by family. myself. <laughs> I need to be my family. So I think, I think that's going to be something that's going to happen down the line. But right now, I can only say that. His mind is focusing on winning football games, and he's seeing that this team cannot or is not capable of winning football games if he's not at his A game. And right now, he is not at his A game. So he's really considering maybe should I retire? Maybe should I just not just play with this team anymore because this team is going to be the end of me if I continue to go out there and get hit like this and get and guys dropping touchdown passes like this. It's not, it's not it. Buccaneers, I'm going to leave y'all with this. Luckily for y'all, and fortunately for y'all, y'all playing the worst division in football. So y'all can still not only win a division, but have a home playoff game. Get your act together. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back after the break. Keep it locked.